In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Morning, dear brethren in the Lord. We meet again in this Southwest Mass for the term, a Mass that we continually encourage one another to continually socially distance, mask up, and to sanitize. We meet in the midst of a pandemic and we so wish one day to be physically present to one another, so that at least we can share the joys and the sorrows of the pandemic. In today's reading, we focus so much on hope. We have to be messengers of hope, and as prophets of our time, we need to be ambassadors of hope. Brethren, with this in mind, let us go to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, through my own fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, my Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may be constantly drawn away from unruly desires and obey by your own gift to the heavenly teaching you give us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We hear our first reading. First reading, Hosea 14, verse 1 to 9. Repentance to bring blessing. Return, Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and receive us graciously, that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made. For in you the fatherless find compassion. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. For my anger has turned away from them. I will be like the Jew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily, like a cedar of Lebanon. He will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree. 
is fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. People will dwell again in his shade. They will flourish like corn. They will blossom like the vine. Israel's fame will be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? I will answer him and care for him. I am like a flourishing juniper. Your, fruit, your fruitfulness comes from me. Who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. The word of the Lord. Glory Thanks be speak. to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, I am the Lord your God, listen to my people. A voice I did not know say to me, I freed your shoulder from the burden. Your hands were freed from the Lord. You called in distress and I delivered you. The response. I am the Lord your God. Listen to my voice. I answered concealed in the thunder. At the waters of Meriba, I tested you. Listen, my people, as I warn you. O Israel, if only you would do it. The response. I am the Lord your God. Listen to my voice. Let there be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. The response. I am the Lord your God. Listen to my voice. Or that my people would heed me, that Israel would walk in my ways. But Israel, I would feed with finest wheat and satisfy the honey from the rock. The response. I am the Lord your God. Listen to my voice. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, says the Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And, and with you. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, one of the scribes came up to Jesus and asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, and the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You, are true, you have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he. And to him, we should love him with all our heart, with all our understanding, with all our strength. And to love one's neighbor is oneself. It's much more than all the bread offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God, and after that, no one dared to ask him any question because the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Hosea. And this is quite a unique prophet because he's called by God to exemplify or to concretize the love of God for his nation, uh, Israel. 
And as such, who we would like to ask, who is a prophet? As a church, we believe that through baptism, we become prophets, prophets, priests, and heirs to the kingdom of God. And a prophet is one who is married to the truth, a truthful person. And the one who's not a prophet is one who's allergic to the truth. So we pray that in our own time, we become the true prophets, people who are not allergic to the truth, and people who are faithful to relationships, to relationship to brother, to sister, to family, and fellow colleagues. We, this is how we live our prophecy. Now, when you look at the time of the prophet Hosea, many things have, had gone wrong. When you look at the covenant that was forged at Mount Sinai, it was long forsaken. Israel was now installing kings without the express authority of their God. And now the kings were forging human relationship or human ties or allegiances with other, other kings, the Assyrians, the Egyptians, so as to be protected. But God is saying today in the first reading, trust in no man in the princes for your own safety. When you depart from the Lord, always know that you become very, very vulnerable. But we need to return to the Lord. And when we return to him, he will embrace us. And this is the key message that we need to take away from the first reading, that God will always embrace us when we return to him. Many people have often asked, why is it, is it that God deserts us in difficult situations? But we may respond to say, God does not desert anybody. We are the ones who desert God through our own freedom, through our own free will. We pray that that which we call freedom, many a time it is limited freedom. It is only freedom in God, because God is love, God is mercy. But we also ask ourselves, how do we receive back those who have hurt us? Do we receive them wholeheartedly or conditionally? Maybe it is conditionally simply because we are suspicious that those who have returned may have hidden agendas, but this is not the case with God. We pray in the midst of this pandemic that we may forge fruitful relationships with family, with friends, and those we meet in our day-to-day -day activities. That at least we offer them love. God is love, and we who are created out of love in his own image, should embrace one another. In the gospel today, we have an interesting scenario in which a question is posed to Jesus by a scribe, which is the greatest of all commandments. And as we all know, Jesus responds with the Shema to say, love the God, your, the God is one, God is one, love me with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. But what is love? We have said in the past, Love is the drive of the will towards an object, the drive of the will, and the human will tends to that which is good, it tends to love. By our very nature, we are created to love by default. And when we say we love God, definitely this has to be translated into how we relate with one another. In schools, in workplaces, and in the world, and Jesus is saying, when you love God, you will also love your neighbor. But who is my neighbor? The person would follow. When you go through the scriptures, Jesus gives the parable of the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. Are we taking note of those in need? Not in, not in need of material goods, but those who are in need of our time, those who are in need of our ear. Many suffer depression because not many take their time to listen to them. We suffer frustrations because we have nowhere to air our grievances, our mental health issues. Our society has become a consumeristic society and transactional society where people seek benefits from a relationship and love is thrown out the window. If we are to love God, we are to also love the neighbor. Let us see God in our fellow brothers and sisters, and let us forge a community that is all loving, 
in the midst of this pandemic. Yes, it is good, but maybe taking time to listen to others, conversing with others, and to see how things are going on on the other side of the line, on the other side of this communication. So then we can be truly Christians, but above all, we are called to be prophets, the people of truth, the people of love, and the people of mercy. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we dedicate, that they may be pleasing to your sight and always solitary to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks for the most holy. Through our beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through me made all things. Whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin, fulfilling your will and praying for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claiming. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down a spirit upon them like a jewel, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the time was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks brought it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that the is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the, in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Earth, mercy, and all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, the church spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we may merit to be quiet, sweet in our life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. By the Savior's command and home by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your strength be at work in us, O Lord, perverting our minds and bodies, that what we have received by participating in the sacrament may bring us to the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration has come to an end. Let, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.